the second half. If you haven't found the first video of this, um, click right up here and I'll have it posted. So section eight on our MS or SDS sheet, exposure controls and personal protection. This is how you know what you should be using. Okay. Um, appropriate engineering controls. This means what the boss is going to do. Environmental exposure controls. All of that is what you are going to, this is what you can do to help keep you from being sick at work. Individual protection measures. Hygiene measures, so like cleaning up. Eye face protection. Glasses, what do you need? Skin hand protection. Body protection. Respiratory protection. So breathing it. How to take care of it if it gets on your skin. How to take care of it if it gets in your eyes. And that is how you protect yourself. You look in here. And you see, oh, I have to wear safety glasses. Now, if there's something in here that involves protection, it is your work's responsibility for protecting you from that. So if it says you need chemical-resistant impervious gloves, work should be providing you with those chemical-resistant impervious gloves if they're asking you to use that chemical. Now, if you're using that chemical not in the way that work is asking you to do it, they don't have to provide you this, and you shouldn't be doing that at work. Your responsibility is to follow the personal protective equipment guidelines in the safety data sheets at work. Your responsibility also comes into labeling containers. You need to protect yourself and the other workers around you. So, if you're transferring chemicals at work, moving chemicals from one big bottle to a little one so you can use some at your workstation or whatever, this happens on a regular basis, or transferring from a highly concentrated bottle into a um, lower concentration, so you're putting water in it to cut it down. If you transfer chemicals to, an, by law, if you transfer chemicals to another container that is not used up by the end of your shift, you have to label the container. Now, good practice and law are two different things. Good practice says you shouldn't transfer into a container that was used for food at one point. So you can't use that water bottle here, transfer a bunch of alcohol into it, like isopropyl alcohol for cleaning, and then use that going back and forth, or mineral spirit. You wouldn't want to make a mistake and have somebody drink that isopropyl alcohol or mineral spirit that you transfer. If you have to use a food container, remove the label and label the bottle immediately. Again, that's not law, but it's good practice to keep people safe at work. Here's how you go through labeling. So, there are stickers that are like this that are made. Okay, so you just take one of these stickers, you put it on. These come from that globally harmonized system. Of all those pictures, we just put an X on the pictures that we want to see. But the first thing we do is put the product ID, what it was, Minwax stain. The second thing is we go to label or section two and we grab that signal word, danger. And we put an X in the danger for the signal word. And this is doing two things. It's teaching you how to fill these out and teaching you how to read them. Next thing, GHS pictograms, fire, health, exclamation point. Fire, health, exclamation point. Last section is section 16. Health, flammability, physical hazards. Material, or hazardous material information system, USA. Health, flammability, physical hazards. So if we go. Health, flammability, physical hazards or instability is zero there. If I don't have an instability there, 
That's where I put the zero. And that's how I go through labeling, creating a label for work. And hopefully this finds you finishing out all that. Let's go through a quick review. of the process here. Remember, it's your job to be responsible at work. Don't do that kind of stuff. Mallory has lifetime injuries because of it. OSHA Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Administration, because they make laws. It was created by Richard Nixon on December 29, 1970. Not that long ago. And then it came into chemical hazards. So that stuff was for physical hazards, and now it's chemical hazards. There's federal OSHA that has hazardous communications and SDS sheets. They set that up. And then Minnesota OSHA added employee right to know. Federal OSHA does the big stuff. Minnesota OSHA added employee right to know. You have the right to know which chemicals you're working with. So again, that came off those TV ads, people getting sick yet from Roundup, mesothemioma, all that. So you should have access to your safety data sheet location anytime you're working. It could be on a computer, could be on a binder, could be a big sign like that. Safety data sheets give you a warning and how to protect yourself. Here's those quick cards again. 2, 8, and 16 are the big ones that you're looking at all the time. There's other information on there in case you need it, but 2, 8, and 16 are always important. Section 2 here. 6-signal word, warning, is less harmful, danger is more harmful. Globally harmonized pictograms gives us information about it, and that's what all those pictograms are. Personal Protective Equipment, PPE. Hear about it all the time in the news right now. COVID-19 PPE. Exposure Personal Protection gives you the information that the, your employer has to provide you if you're going to be using those products. Your responsibility is to follow that PPE. If it's asking for it, follow it. Also, you have to label. By law, you don't have to label right away. But in good practice, you should. By law, you just have to label by the end of your shift. And here's the process for labeling. Again, put the name on it. Put the signal word on it. Do your GHS symbols on it. And then fill out this form right here. All right. Now you know a little piece of job safety. Use, make sure you are using these tools at work and keeping yourself safe. And have a great day.